Welcome back, Bots and Bits fans. Today we're taking a look at the Transform Mission M1OB Carnage, otherwise known as Breakdown. If you're like me, then you're really excited to get a look at what this guy's like, especially after Toyzone on Weibo released a couple of sample product shots of Menasaur all combined, and he looks absolutely amazing, straight out of the IDW comics. So first we'll take a look at what's in the box. So inside the box, we get these new parts, which that is definitely Optimus Prime's gun, and that looks like Optimus Prime's crutch area, smokestacks, a couple of clear wheels, I think looks like we're getting a similar product to Megasori. Get the instructions, and that's it. So here he is, and at first glance he looks like a very nicely sculpted Lamborghini Sesto. And next to Transform Mission's Disorder, they just look absolutely fantastic together. That is just... That is 100% Stunticons right there. I love it. But if you look a little bit closer at some of the details, you start to feel a little ripped off. I'm just going to go straight into the paint and talk about it, because it's the biggest problem with this guy. Now I'm not sure if you can see that or not. The blue paint along all of these rivets here is just absolutely sloppy as the edging is really poorly done. So you can see there, there, there. Bit of blue paint there. I've got blue paint splattered there on the pearl. Uh, this silver is into the blue down here along the side skirts. You can see paint missing there. Paint inside the line along there but not here and then all the way along got paint missing on the edge, I've got chipping there front bumpers, similar story it's kind of inside that gap and kind of not, it's all smudged up side of the wheel arch I've got plastic flash, missing paint, over paint look all inside there all inside there, the silver's all messed up around the edges that's all messed up same, little bit of paint there inside the line. These side skirts are a similar story. It's just I've got chipping there. Is that chipping? Yeah, chipping there. Back's not too bad, but I think that's just cast plastic to me. Yeah, it is. That's just, that's not painted at all. Um, you see the painted blue in the back here? That's uneven and a mess. Uh, under here, I've got lots of shredded plastic inside that inside that peg hole paint all misting around there, looks like something took a bite out of it to be honest down here, all this silver is really fuzzy that red is really poorly applied, you can see the blue under it and it's just all globby and it looks like this bottom dot here has some dirt in it these silver bits here look like they've only had one layer of paint applied, they're really spotty and flaky, there's chips overspray all everywhere um, the paint on this is really really rubbish and the red up here I'm not sure if that's coming out on camera very well or not but it looks like it's just one layer has been thinly applied and you can see the silver from the pearl coming up underneath sounds like that might be a good effect but it's not you can see it's all lumpy around the edging there and that's a problem that I'll get to a bit later. Now I did think perhaps these paint issues are only mine or just a small minority. But I actually have two here. And while the paint issues are not exactly the same on both, the second one does have similar issues. As you can see the wheel arch just has blue overspray around half of it. I've got chipping all along the bottom here. The same deal with the line along the side skirts back is fine, the blue triangle bits are uneven these rivets are a bit better but still you can see overspray on that second one that second one in overspray there same deal with the silver going into the blue on these vents bits and this one has blue paint coming out of the vent along the top side skirts are just as bad front bumper is worse, there's like some black shit in there see that? what the hell is that? scratches along the front bumper 
blue paint on the silver fuzzy silver paint there the red dots are a bit better but they've splodged red paint right there the silver in there's crap chipping on this section same flaky fuzzy oversprayed silver on these sections and then we've got like plastic flash in the joints there um, this peg is a bit better than the other one but it's still messed up and speaking of plastic I've got stress marks out of the box on the inside of these joints already I haven't even transformed these yet see just the plastic is just rough it's just really rough you'll constantly look see the little extra bits of plastic that just it's like the mold wasn't compressed together hard enough and they've had, had heaps of plastic seepage out the edges and just see these little sharp bits that just stick up and fuck up the paint another plastic problem I've noticed is the edgings on the panels themselves they don't line up very well and they're not dead straight either they've got like a box cutter mark in them especially on here you can see there's like a really rough edge on that top panel that looks like they've cut it off of a mold with a knife and it just hasn't gone to plan that side's a bit closer but you can see there the plastic isn't even the same with these edges they're just not smooth lines at all they're really rough and it's the same on this one see that it's not it's not a straight edge and that one's got the similar join in the same spot so I suppose at least the plastic errors on this are consistent and the same with the um, side mirrors here they're glued on and they're not glued on very well heaps of gaps lots of plastic flash on the edge especially around that top bit same with this one that mirror is not too bad but this one um, is a mess I guess that looks the same yeah, look, it's both sides that aren't glued on very well. And there's a bit more paint, le <laughs> paint leaking there. Oh, these guys are just an absolute mess. Their paint is horrible. And I'd like to compare it with a $5 Lamborghini Sesto that I got from a chemist like a year ago that my two-year-old's been playing with. Um, this has spent about three months out in the sun. It's got some pepper Pig shit in there, some grass and stuff, but... Look at the red paint. Red paint on black is hard to do. And look at that. Every single one is exactly the same. They might not be perfect, but they're all exactly the same. Same with these vents. The paint edging is really good. The red in these bits is really well applied. And this is it. Look, there you go. Kinsmart. Lamborghini Sesto. Five bucks at a chemist. And the paint application on this. Even the silver isn't too bad. Like... Come on guys, we're paying 110 to 130 Australian for this. And these paint apps are beating you. It really is a hard fall from their disorder release, which wasn't perfect, but went together really well. And the paint apps were really accurate, really vibrant, even the silver down here. While there is some overspray, it looks like they've given it a couple of extra coats just to get rid of some of that black flaking out from underneath. This was quite a good standard to go by. I was expecting more like this, and I would have been really happy with that, but instead, we got this. Alright, that's enough bitching about its vehicle mode. Uh, we'll get stuck into transformation, and one thing I will give it is the instruction guide is very detailed. Colour, really well printed. The photos are very accurate, and also covers going from robot to combined mode. And just while reading this, I can see that the carnage in the instruction manual also has major paint defects. See? They couldn't even get it right for their instructions. <laughs> Fucking, what are these guys doing? So first up, I'm going to remove the gun. It wants to come out. And then we're going to untab the wheels, grabbing the rubber and just lifting it up like so. Be careful here if you do have stress marks on this hinge. Then what you want to do is take these two sections untab them from up here and fold them out revealing stress marks in both knees 
So flip it over and detach the roof from the windshield, grabbing it at the sides and just lifting it out like that. Then you want to grab both the legs, split them apart, like so, and then break the legs away. And the instructions say to fold them down, but you really want to pull these pegs out first, then do it. There you go, just like that. Oh, they they are very concerning. Then fold these kneecaps out of the way. Then fold the feet out and grab this section, bending at this hinge. Bring it over like so. Instructions say to have the wheels up at this point. Then fold these cylinder sections down. It's a bit tight, that one. And then bring this section down past the wheel. And then you want to force this joint here through here. Shimmy it over so the wheel is in the middle, and then you've got a hinge. Hang on, let me just, you've got a second hinge here. Shimmy it over, twist all this detail at the hinge, and these two tabs are gonna go behind this, and this tab is going behind this zigzag bit here. So I'm gonna fold it around. Get that bit in behind, get those two tabs in. So now we're going to bring the knee down on top of the wheel. It's on a double hinge. So just bend it and then straighten it up a bit. Like so. It doesn't tab into anything, it just sits there. Then you're going to grab this section and hinge it backwards. Like so. And then grab the foot at this base bit. Fold it up. And then fold the front of the foot up. Now you have it, that's the foot. None of this really tabs in or secures, it's still just this floppy, that, that's the foot right there, it's just this hinge, this whole section here. So there's both legs done. Uh, under the torso, you want to rotate this around, then you want to grab the front bonnet, just pull back on that, and it's on this double hinge here, so you just work that back and out of your way. Once you've done that, get these arms out the way and rotate this. Bring this up. Fold the bumper in. That's very tight. Pull this out. Bearing in mind these two tabs, the back there, fold that around, and then you want to lift these two sections up on these hinges here. So untab it and just rock that up and in there like that. So we'll do this side again, untab it and then rock it up and in. And turn him over, just get to work on the arms. So you want to rock this hinge down, like so. The arms out of the way, both sides obviously. And then you want to rotate this joint in here. See there's a peg at the bottom, so you rotate that around. And there's a peg hole in the shoulder piece here. Which you'll then line up. And tab in. Yeah, they now have a very stiff shoulder joint. Lift this wheel up and we want to get this peg here at the top of the bicep into that part of the shoulder. That's a tight fit. So just hold it all in place. There we go. Fold the wheel up. That's the Fucking kidding me. This little bastard of a thing just come off. 
Yeah, that's my two-year-old just confirming that it broke. Thank you. Now for this part of the arm, you want to rock this door section out and then fold it down flat like that. And then you can fold the window around. So we'll get this section down, grab this bit in here, fold it out, collapse this bit back in, making sure to connect with the peg on his neck. And there he is in bot mode, all cleaned up, holding his weapon, which he does hold um, really well. I'll cover articulation first. So we've got the heads on a ball joint. So we've got huge range of motion there. Biceps are on a mushroom peg, which are really, really stiff and strong. Um, it's kind of a double jointed elbow. If we look back here, there are two joints. But the forearm here restricts that quite a bit, so you get you get to there. We have a very strong and hindered wrist swivel. That window seems to be getting in the way quite a lot. But that just that does not want to move at all, that wrist. We have excellent hip swivel. No ratchets. In the legs, very, very tight plastic. I uh, got the little hip skirts, so you can get all the way, front and back, and then all the way out as well. And they are really strong. The knee, there's a tab, see this back here, this little hitch tabs in behind the bumper. But it doesn't do it well. You've got to sort of like wiggle it on there and it will still come straight off. So um, that's because this joint here for the knee is super stiff. But you only get back to there because the whole bumper section gets in the way. And then moving that back, you can see that comes untabbed. And I think that's actually cut some of the plastic off now. Yep, one of the tabs has come off just from doing that. That's just, that's just brilliant. Swivel at the hip, not at the knee. Now the feet, these things, it does work to an extent, but it is really dumb. You've got the rocker here for the in and out, but you've got to move the shin and the foot, position it, and then put it back. Then you just see straight in. There's like, see it's just really poorly done. This doesn't tab into anything. You've got this little hook here that can sort of hold it in place, but still, I mean, you can see what the mechanism is like. See, it's just... It's really, really poorly done. Stress mark, shocking one in the back of the knee there. Possibly, they're, they are really stiff, so maybe they've just overdone the screws. That screw's sticking out, and that one isn't. Another thing, the backpack doesn't actually tab in anywhere. These two sections here just line up with this part of his torso and just sits there. Just like that. This backpack, that's like Masterpiece Tracks to me. That's just hollow as. Actually, I think it looks better um, if you don't go G1. And instead um, rotate it around fold that back in and sit it like that. That does look a lot better in my opinion and makes him look a little bit more different to Disorder. Stand up. Stand up. Come on. Alright. All faults aside, he does look really awesome. I know I ragged on him for pretty much all of this review, but joint-wise, he is really solid. Style-wise, he looks really good. It's just paint and finish, really. And I think I was so harsh because Disorder was such a high standard and brilliant stepping stone, and for them to come down one to this guy, like, the quality difference is remarkable. I think this is a classic case we're seeing of rushing a product out before Chinese New Year and just absolutely messing it up with a bit more time and effort. 
this guy could be almost on par with Disorder. He never will be because the engineering is um, really terrible. But he would be in the same league as him. But he's not. So we're all invested in the Menosaur set now, aren't we? So let's hope the next one is much better quality than this.